every decade, from 1820 to 1970, every decade, the American working people enjoyed a rising level of wages. In the 1970s, real wages stopped rising. With the introduction of computers, American workers became more and more productive. We had a 30-year period of rising labor productivity. But now stay with me. Each year the worker produces more, and what do you pay the worker each year? The same. So the last 30 years of flat wages and rising productivity are the greatest profit boom in the history of American capitalism and quite possibly any capitalism. And we know what they did. They began paying themselves levels of wages and bonuses nobody ever heard of before. Large corporations paid their people tens, hundreds of millions of dollars in annual salaries. The increase in the concentration of income and wealth in the United States has been enormous. Uh, what's happened in the last couple of decades is almost a quarter of all the income goes to the upper 1%. Around 40%, depending on how you measure it, of the wealth goes to the upper 1%. Most Americans are worse off than they were, say, a decade ago. And that doesn't even include the sense of insecurity, the loss of jobs, the insecurity about health. Rights that most people in Europe take for granted. In the United States, people, if they lose their job, can lose all access to health care. If you have a very split society, there are going to be very different views about what's important. If the rich can buy their own parks, they don't need to have public parks. If the rich can buy their own education, we don't have to have public education. If the rich can buy their own health care, we don't have to have good health care for most Americans. And that's where we're winding up today. The people at the top, that 1%, are using their political power to try to preserve their wealth and meanwhile making sure that the government doesn't do what is necessary for the prosperity, the functioning of our entire society. If you're born today in a poor family, the chance is much greater than it was 30 years ago that you are going to stay poor. If you're born in a very wealthy family, the chance is much greater than it was 30 years ago that you're going to stay wealthy. What we've done is show data for health and lots of uh, social problems, you know, like violence and drug abuse and so on. And we found that they are all much more common in societies that have bigger income differences between rich and poor. When more and more people, left and right, have a sense you know, there's truly something fundamentally wrong in the country, and, and that's when you know you're beginning to talk about a systemic problem, not just who wins the next election, but what, really what's wrong at the heart of the system, the economic power base. A vision of how to restructure the system rather than to empower another failing minor reform movement, that's what's at stake, and, and as I say, it is maybe the most important period of American history maybe bar none, because we're talking about really systemic change, not just political change and economic change.